Hello everybody. Another week has gone by and a lot to report on. Um, it has been a week of two halves. Uh, the first half we've seen green arrows everywhere, all the markets going up, uh, the S&P approaching historical highs, uh, same for the DAX, just hovering uh, above the 12,000 point, uh, which is a traditional uh, resistance uh, level for the DAX. Um, also in China, everywhere really, uh, all, the, all the investors were very confident, everything was going well, until we got to Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, I don't know, um, maybe because of a number of reasons, uh, things changed. And then uh, on Thursday, of course, uh, the end of the week being a shorter week due to the Easter weekend, uh, we've seen red arrows everywhere. So everything going down, uh, investors running away. Uh, so how can we explain this? Well, let's look firstly at what has been going on. Um, what we can say in terms of actual facts, towards the end of last week we've had very positive data coming from China, uh, indicating that their production, um, industrial production, that is, output, uh, is growing and it grew more than what was expected. So that's very good news. Obviously, that uh, stimulus uh, measures that the Chinese put in place earlier in the year have kicked in and are starting to see the effects rippling through the economy and there's some good growth from there, which ultimately will be good news for everybody, especially for Europe. Um, otherwise, we've, uh, we've also had the earnings season, which is now in full flow, uh, with uh, mixed results. Uh, so some positive stories, for example, in Europe we had Nestle, uh, which uh, delivered better results than everybody expected, so a good story. But for example, in the US, uh, not so good for, for uh, healthcare companies, uh, just to give you a few examples. So what is the net result of all of this? Well, the net result is that it appears that we are coming across some investor uh, fatigue. So uh, investors are tired. Many of them, surprisingly, uh, if you look at what happened at the tail end of 2018 in December when there was a, a bit of a crash there, um, many investors have actually reached their targets for the year already and we're only halfway through April. So what do they do when this happens? Well, they run away, they close their depositions, they sell and take the rest of the year off. I wish I could do the same. Um, Results, impact on the markets, obviously, is not positive. So when investors start selling, prices start going down. Um, also, uh, we may be looking at um, another set of factors which is related to the central bank's policies. Okay, so we've seen that the Fed uh, had a pivotal moment there, totally inverted, complete U-turn and became very dovish earlier in the year, so we don't expect any more interest rate rises from the American Federal Reserve until the end of 2019. Um, also, the ECB has become, uh, is becoming even more dovish, if that is possible, uh, with uh, President Mario Draghi once again saying that they will do whatever it takes and they may adopt uh, further easing policies in order to help growth. But the fact is that despite this uh, very uh, benign attitude from the main central banks, um, growth is still very weak, is very anemic um, everywhere. Uh, perhaps with the exception of China, as I mentioned earlier, where the results were a little bit better than expected. Everywhere else, um, the, the results are not so great. So maybe this explains why we are seeing at the end of this week stock markets going down and we are looking at uh, a flattening yield curve. So investors are parking their money on 10-year treasury titles and also on German boons. Why? Well, because they're a bit uncertain about what is the future and uh, this future depends to a large extent uh, on the global economic growth. So this is all I have to say for this week. Uh, started well, didn't finish so well. Um, fixed income doing very well. I'll see you again next week for more on what is going on in the markets.